Hey designers! In this video, we're going to create a camera movement effect using just a still image. This is the chat image that we'll be animating with a dynamic camera movement, so let's get started. First, I'll create a new composition with the dimensions 1080 by 1920. Once it's set, click OK. Now let's import the image. I'm using a PNG of a chat layout. If you want to follow along, I'll share the link from FreePick in the description so you can download the same one. Next, let's create a new camera layer. Make all the layers 3D. Now we'll create a new null object. This is important because we're going to control the camera animation using this null layer. Set the null object to 3D by enabling the 3D switch. Then parent the camera to the null object. This way, all the animations we do will be on the null object, giving us more flexibility and control. Now select the null 2 layer. Press P on your keyboard to bring up the position property. Then hold Shift and press R to also reveal the rotation settings. Click the stopwatch next to position, X rotation, and Y rotation. Now let's change some values. Start adjusting the X rotation, Y rotation, and the position properties of the null 2 layer. When you change the X rotation, you'll notice the chat tilts forward or backward. Changing the Y rotation will rotate it sideways, kind of like turning a page. Now if you adjust the Z position, the chat will appear to move closer or farther from the camera. The Y position moves it up or down, depending on the direction. And adjusting the X position will slide the chat left or right. Take your time and play around with these until you're happy with how it looks. What we want right now is to focus on the first chat message, so we'll create a close-up view of that section. Once you're happy with the position and rotation, we'll do something optional, but helpful. We'll add a shape layer as a guide. This isn't for the final animation, it's just so we know which part of the chat we're focusing on. So, create a new shape layer. In the settings, remove the fill and apply only a stroke. This will create a simple outlined box. Now lock the shape layer. It's just a visual reference to help us frame the chat correctly. Next, move the timeline indicator 30 frames forward to prepare for the next animation step. To move forward in time quickly, we'll use a shortcut. Press Ctrl plus Shift plus right arrow on your keyboard. Each time you press it, it jumps forward by 10 frames. So I'm going to press it 2 or 3 times to move ahead, around 20 to 30 frames, depending on how fast I want the animation to be. Now let's move on to the next part of the animation. Start by changing the Y position so that the second chat comes into view. You can also adjust the Y rotation and X rotation to give it a more dynamic feel. Take your time with this. Move things around slowly and tweak them however you like until it looks right. Once you're happy with this movement, move 30 frames forward in the timeline. You can do that by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus right arrow three times. Then again, make some adjustments to the position, X rotation, and Y rotation to bring the next part of the chat into focus. Perfect. Now move 30 more frames forward and once again change the rotation and position values for the next chat bubble.
Perfect. Now move 30 more frames forward and once again change the rotation and position values for the next chat bubble. Great. Only the last one is left now. At this point, we want to reset everything so the entire mobile screen is visible. Set the X rotation to zero. Set the Y rotation to zero as well. And adjust the position so that the full mobile screen fits nicely into the frame. Perfect. Now let's preview the animation to see how it flows. To smooth out the movement, select all the keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard to apply Easy Ease. Click on the Graph Editor icon. If your graph doesn't look like mine and you see a different kind of curve or straight lines, just right-click inside the Graph Editor area and make sure Edit Speed Graph is selected. This will give you the proper curve view to work with. Now, select the first keyframe and create a nice smooth curve, like this. Then move to the second keyframe and shape its curve like this as well. Let's preview it and see how it looks. Yep, that's looking smooth. Now repeat the same process for all the remaining keyframes. Create smooth curves like this for each one, so the animation flows nicely. Once that's done, preview the entire animation again. Now, to slow down the animation a bit, we'll stretch it out slightly. Select all the keyframes, and while holding down Alt, drag the last keyframe a bit to the right. Go to your Camera 1 layer, open its Properties, then go into Camera Options. Turn on Depth of Field. Now let's talk about Focus Distance and Aperture. Remember that rectangle we created earlier? That was just a guide to help us know where we want the text to stay in focus. The area inside the rectangle should appear sharp, while everything else can stay a bit blurry for that cinematic feel. So let's adjust the focus distance. As you slide this value, you'll notice which part of the image becomes sharp. The goal is to have the text inside that rectangle in clear focus. The higher the aperture value, the more intense the blur becomes around the out-of-focus areas. So if you want a dramatic depth effect, increase the aperture. Play around with both focus distance and aperture until you're happy with how it looks. All right, now that everything looks good, I've gone ahead and deleted the rectangle layer since we only needed it as a guide. Now here's a small issue you might notice. When we reach the last frame, everything becomes blurry because nothing is currently in focus at that point. So let's fix that. Move your timeline indicator to somewhere between the second last and last keyframe. Open camera, options again. Now click the stopwatch icon next to focus distance and aperture to create keyframes there. Then move the indicator to the last keyframe and change the values for focus distance and aperture so that the entire mobile screen is in focus again. You'll need to adjust these settings depending on your scene, but the goal is to make everything sharp at the end. Once you're happy with how that looks, preview the final animation one last time. And that's it. Your animation is complete. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to Ace Designs for more content like this.